Hello YouTube, it's Mr. Mags here. Pokemon Rivals are possibly the most consistent aspect of Pokemon throughout the entire franchise. Every single Pokemon game outside of Legends Arceus has some kind of rival character, in most cases more than one at this point, some kind of rival character that is intended to act as a roadblock, as a companion character that you meet consistently throughout your playthrough of, of any given Pokemon game. But not every single rival character is created equal. Some do have very solid teams. Some are actually a challenge that, you know, you actually have to plan for while you're playing. But some don't really have a lot of personality. Their teams aren't very well built. A lot of them don't feel like they even come from the region you're in because they use a lot of Pokemon that, that come from a previous region that don't really flesh out the region in a way you feel it should. So because of all that, I thought it'd be fun to continue this series I have going where I analyze every single major trainer in the Pokemon franchise, give my opinions on them, and then see if I can create a better team for them. So today I'm going to be going over every single Pokemon rival. In this video, I'm just going to be going over the ones from generations one through six, because in total, I counted there are 30 different iterations of a rival character throughout the entire franchise. And surprisingly, one through six would be about the halfway point uh, for, you know, for, for all the rivals. So sit back, relax, and uh, I'll kick it over to the little presentation I have to go over every single Pokemon rival in generations one through six. Okay, so here's my presentation, analyzing every single Pokemon rival team from generation one through six. Again, I will do the, the other arrivals in, a, in the next video, but just right now, we're just going to do one through six. So, just like the other videos, I will be judging them based on a certain set of criteria. The first one being the general team strength. This is, I personally feel, possibly the most important part of a rival character. If, you know, throughout your journey... When they pop up, it could seem as an inopportune time because you're just not ready. You know, you have to get to the next gym or there's an important story beat you want to get to. Or there's a Pokemon in the route just past them that you want to get to, but you can't because they're in the way. Um, but, you know, not every single rival is exactly really a challenge. They're more so of a nuisance. So that's kind of how I'll be, how one of the aspects I'll be ranking them on. Next originality and personality these kind of go together i feel some can have a solid team but it doesn't really feel like it fits their personality it, it doesn't really feel like it's original to them because they have a lot of overlap with other trainers some of them just the team itself doesn't really mesh together this is more of a vibe based thing and i'm sure a lot of people will disagree with this specifically but uh this one, especially in, in generations where you have multiple rivals, I feel like just the personality of the team itself, you know, showing, you know, showing originality in the, the teams they pick, just showing, showcasing uh, them as a trainer, I feel that is very important. Next, how well they represent the region as a whole. Some rivals, um, the, the teams that they pick, a lot of them don't come from the region that they come from. Uh, there's several where they only have two Pokemon, their starter Pokemon, and then one other random Pokemon, <laughs> and then the rest are previous gen Pokemon. Not every single Pokemon on a rival team has to be from that region, but half at least would be nice. <laughs> Ideally, more than half, but especially if the ones they do, that they are representing are on other trainers' teams. Uh, this will be more, you know, kind of like with the second one, kind of a case by case basis. But um, I went, especially when creating the teams that I would put in, I kind of viewed these rivals as a way to showcase the player Pokemon that you could easily see throughout the region, but wouldn't necessarily, you know, show up on major trainer teams. So that's kind of where that where that one's coming from. And lastly, only the final team of six Pokemon, or whatever their highest number is, will be judged and ranked. Now, two things with here. 
One, um, some rivals weirdly will have a team of six, and then the next time you fight them, they'll have a, a smaller team. Um, and some will just never get a team of six at all. So I'm only ever going to be judging it based on their fullest team. And the other thing, this will be unlike with my other videos where I essentially determined if they're good or good or bad and then ranked them, uh, you know, per region, determine how, how many have a bad team. I'll be doing this slightly differently where I'll be doing them in a, in a list where after everything said and done, you'll see one through 30 and I'll be ranking them against each other to determine who I believe to be the best and the worst Pokemon rival based on the teams from the original, from the games they come from. But the last thing here, um, even though I will be judging them solely based on their final team, if there is a tie in my ranking, I will be considering the teams that they have throughout the playthrough if a tie is needed to be broken. So that'll make, that'll make more sense as we go along. <clears throat> so... Let's just start where it all began, Pokemon Red and Blue, with Blue, or Gary, whatever you want to call him, I'll just call him Blue. And this team is iconic, is a very strong team. His team in Pokemon, in the uh, the, the, the Sylph co-building, is a very solid roadblock for that point in the game. Um, you know, it's a very solid champion team. However, I've always had a bit of an issue with just the construction of the team as a whole. Outside of Pidgeot and Executor, the other four Pokemon he could possibly have that aren't his starter, all four of them are either aces or significant Pokemon on other significant trainers. Obviously, you have Alakazam, who's on Sabrina's team, which is or, which is particularly annoying because the first time you fight Alakazam, um, you fight Alakazam, and then you fight Sabrina after that, you cannot fight Sabrina before you fight his Alakazam. Meaning, by the time you get to her Alakazam, that Pokemon isn't special to her anymore. At least with Arcanine, it's a Growlithe every time you fight it before you fight Blaine. Um, obviously, Gyarados is on Lance's team. That was not as big of a deal since it's not Lance's ace. But by the time you get to ace... Assuming that he has the team with the Gyarados, you've already figured that out, and it's just kind of mundane at that point. And then Rhydon is just kind of tacked on at the very end of the game after you fight Giovanni, which is technically better based on my general rule set, but it still feels a little lazy, especially when there are other Pokemon in the region that aren't represented at all. And then you fight a Rhydon, and then immediately after he has a right horn, and then the next time you fight him, he has a right on. That just for me feels uh, a, a little a little lazy. However, together it is still a very very solid team. And going forward, um, with every single rival, if they have a situation where they have a grass fire water core, and they just switch out a Pokemon depending on which starter they have, I'll I'll be showing the Pokemon that they could have, and then you can substitute the starter that you want from there. Um, but when sometimes when I'll do the the fixed team, I'll put what I see to be their canon starter in there, and then just explain you know explain what they would have otherwise. But at least for for right now, for this team specifically, I it is again a very very solid team. It's a good rival team. I just personally feel like it's a little annoying that there is so much overlap with other major trainers. So. Here's the team that I decided to fix him with. I decided to switch out Alakazam for Gengar. And remember, when I'm doing these, uh, the, these fixed teams, I'm doing them based on the fixed teams from my previous videos. So for a little bit of context, in my Elite Four video, I said that they should actually switch out Agatha for a normal Elite Four member, because Gengar was the only ghost type Pokemon in Generation 1, so there was a lot of overlap in her team, and you could do a lot better with having a normal gym or a Leaf member instead. So because of that, Gengar is right for the taking. Nidoking, um, yes, it is on Giovanni's team, but it is not his ace, which is which I feel is more important than just 
you know, him having one at all. And also I feel it's a very solid Pokemon to see progress throughout the game because other, because normally his ride on, he just gets randomly at the end. Whereas I think Nidoran, Nidorino, Nido King, that's, that's a solid Pokemon that like you could find him when you fight him at Nugget Bridge, he can have his, his Pidgeotto, Nidoran, uh, uh, Rattata, and a starter. And then when you fight him at the SSN, his, uh, Ratatouille is Nidoran can evolve into Raticate and Nidorino, and then when he gets to Silphco, this might be a little corny, but I corny, but I've always kind of liked this idea where, you know, the theory is that his Raticate died during the SS and fight. So when he goes to, you know, presumably bury his Pokemon to Pokemon Tower, he replaced it with a Haunter that he caught at at a <laughs> at Pokemon Tower. Again, that might be a little corny, corny, and like definitely feeding into a fan theory. But a, I think Gengar does fit him well, especially since I took off, I took off Gengar uh, from the Elite Four, so he's right for the picking. Um, but I, I think it's fine, especially when you know theory crafting to kind of take that kind of stuff into into effect here. He is keeping Executor. Um, I decided kind of early on in this process to not worry too much about the fact that there could be overlap between the rest of his team and his starter. Because if he had the Venusaur team, he would still have Executor. I decided that's okay. Um, you know, it, it is a playthrough team essentially. When you know, when any random person is playing through Pokemon, they're not necessarily going to be choosing Pokemon solely based on if if they don't have that Pokemon type already. Like I know for example, you know, the the very first time I ever played through uh uh Pokemon Platinum, I had a Empoleon and a Gastrodon on the same team. You know, they're both they're both water types. They don't share they don't overlap any weaknesses, but still they're both water types. So I I feel like having multiple Pokemon, as long as it's no more than two that have the same type. I'm okay with it. And then also Pinsir. That's the kind of Pokemon I was hoping they would give him outside of it, uh, outside of Rhydon for his final two appearances in Red and Blue because Pinsir is used nowhere else in the entire game. I don't even know if you didn't catch one in the Safari Zone. I don't think you would even see one. There's maybe one trainer in Victory Road that has a Pinsir, but outside of that, there's no other trainers in the entire game that have a pincer. So it feels like the perfect thing, you know, he could, he can either get it after, you know, during the, 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 after you beat Giovanni, or he could get it at Silphco where he could reasonably have already been to Safari Zone, pick it up alongside Executor. There's a lot of places that could kind of slot in, but regardless, I think this team as a whole just feels more representative of the region as a whole and doesn't overlap nearly as much with other major trainers. So, so yeah, I, I personally like this team a lot. So current rankings, again, this is going to be ranking solely based on the actual canon team, not my fixed teams. So current rankings, blue from red and blue is at the top. Good job. Um, so let's move on to yellow, where blue does have a very different team in Pokemon Yellow. His team, Sandslash, Alakazam, Executor, Magneton, Cloyster, Ninetales. I actually like this team a lot um, for two reasons. One, it's a little better in the aspect of him having an Alakazam because when you fight him in the, in the Silvco building, it's only a Kadabra at that point. So Alakazam is still special to Sabrina at that point in the game. It does overlap with Executor, but it's not too big of a deal since that's the only type that really overlaps here. I like Sand Slash um, since if Giovanni doesn't have one, which I could go other way on him having one, that's the only place that a major trainer would have a Sand Slash. Um, I really like him having three two-stage Pokemon that evolve by stones and then Magneton to also also being a two-stage electric type to kind of parallel with his the, the uh, Jolteon team that he could have. 
it just all goes together very well. And if he didn't have Alkazam at all, that's kind of my only criticism. It's technically better, but it's still not ideal for him to have an ace of a previous Pokemon because outside of Alakazam, the only other Pokemon that really is an overlap with other major trainers is Cloyster and Ninetales. And again, they're not really, they, I don't really consider them as egregious because they're not aces of Lorelei and Blaine. But it's, it is very okay that they're here because they do complete that trio of fire, grass, water Pokemon that evolve as stones. So I just really like the intentionality of this team. It's not a more intimidating team than his red and blue team. Absolutely not. <laughs> like it's kind of hard to when that team has a Gyarados and a Darkenine. But I think this team is just overall better constructed. And if you just switched out Alakazam for a Gengar, this would be pretty much a perfect team in my opinion. So because of all that, I'm putting blue from yellow slightly above blue from red and blue. And again, I know blue from red and blue has a very iconic team, but I think his yellow team is just overall better constructed. Moving on to gold and silver. Now, silver, his team is kind of the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place, because I really do not like his team in the slightest because it's so weird to me that they just you know they have this brand new region of a hundred new pokemon that you can choose from and for the vast majority of your playthrough when you're fighting silver four of his pokemon are gen one pokemon golbat Kadabra, Magneton, Haunter, slash Gengar. He doesn't even get Kadabra until randomly the very end of the game. You, you, when you fight him in Victory Road, that's when you just you just tax on Kadabra. So they had the opportunity to fix, you know, to fix a lot of the problems he had by adding on any Gen 2 Pokemon there. Ursa Ring, Donphan, Skarmory, you know, Heracross. It, even though that's like there are so many other Gen 2 Pokemon they could have thrown on there, but no, instead, they gave him a Kadabra, which means that a third of his team is identical to Blue's team from Yellow. <laughs> and on top of that, Gengar, you know I have beef with Gengar because Gengar is everywhere. <laughs> Even in Gold and Silver, outside of Silver, you have Morty having a team of four from the Gengar line. You have Usine in Crystal, who has a Haunter. And you have Karen, who has a Gengar as well. So you just fight a lot of Pokemon from the Haunter, you know, from, the, from that line throughout the entire game. And again, you don't even fight his Crobat until the last possible time you could fight him. Whereas before then, it's just a Golbat, which I like the idea of of his Crobat showcase and that he now is able to show love and affection towards his Pokemon where it evolves into a Crobat. I just wish that happened a lot earlier. But the way it is now, the th he technically has three Pokemon that are from this region and one of them barely counts because it's the Golbat for most of the game. And then the, the three Pokemon that are from the previous region are just, th are used so often on so many other trainer teams even blue in his gym battle fight in gold and silver has an alakazam <laughs> so there is still that overlap between silver and blue in this in this game as it is so i just really really do not like this team at all it doesn't represent the region well at all. It overlaps with the trainers, not only from this region, but also from previous region. It's just a very badly constructed team. So I decided to do this. You keep Sneasel Crobat for Alligator. That's perfectly fine. Again, I like the intentionality of, of Crobat evolving from friendship. I like him st stealing the Sneasel and the for Alligator. But 
you give him an Ursa Ring because Ursa Ring is used nowhere else in the entire game. That's the kind of pick I was hoping they would do instead of Kadabra, especially since Ursa Ring can be found in Victory Road. It makes sense. You know, he beats every single trainer there while he's just waiting for you. He finds an Ursa Ring. But I also feel like Teddy Ursa should be one of the Pokemon that you can find in headbutt trees kind of early on because otherwise you can't find it until super late in the game. Um, and if I were making gold and silver, I would make every single uh, every single Gen 2 Pokemon more easily available earlier on if possible. So, you know, let's just say you can headbutt trees, you can headbutt the trees in Azalea Town and find Teddy Ursa. So when you fight him in Azalea, he has Zubat, Teddy Ursa, uh, Krakna. I just think that's a very solid second fight for him. And then you also give him an Electabuzz. It at least evolves from a Gen 2 Pokemon with an Elekid. You can even kind of keep his theme of, of stealing a lot of his Pokemon, where when you get to the daycare right before Goldenrod, the, the daycare man can have some kind of comment about how, you know, some redheaded trainer stole an egg from us and that hashed into an Elekid. So when you fight him in the Burnt Tower, he has now has an Elekid. And then Skarmory, another Pokemon that was given absolutely no love in the entire game that Kadabra basically, you know, took the spot from. Um, in my, you know, ideal Pokemon game, I gave Skarmory to Jasmine, but I think it's perfectly fine for, for Skarmory to be here because it's a Pokemon you find pretty late in the game that, you know, he, he's always one step ahead, so he can, you know, he, he can get one. Also, you know, if we're taking this team in a vacuum as just changing it based on the original gold and silver, since Skarmory is nowhere else, it makes perfect sense to go here. I just think this team is much more unique. It fits him a lot better. It fits the region a lot better. And I just think it's a overall grand improvement from his original gold and silver team. The current rankings, silver, Still top three, but you know, f uh, spoilers is not going to stay you know, <laughs> like that for you know forever. Okay, moving on to Ruby and Sapphire. Now, I like May as a character a lot. Ruby and Sapphire, Emerald are my all-time favorite Pokemon games. I think the the battle that you have on Route One Eleven with her that can be a very significant roadblock especially in emerald however that doesn't save the fact that you never fight her with a full team you never fight her with a team of fully evolved pokemon this right here is the most complete and strongest team that you ever fight from her this is her lily cove city team Taking out the starry Pokemon, putting in Whalmer, for example, it's Swellow, a Shroomish, who is well above evolution level, Nummel, and Whalmer is at least all Pokemon from her region. So I'll give her props for that. But why is it still a Shroomish? Why is it still a Nummel? Maxi can have an underlevel camera up. Why can't she? Whalmer, I'm not too, I'm not as upset as because Whalmer does evolve at 40 and Willy Cove City is definitely below level 40. And it's, you know, it has a high enough HP stat where it, it can get away with just being a Whalmer here. But the other two Pokemon are, are not fully evolved. And that's very weird to me. And that's not even the worst part. If you were, if I were to put in her starter Pokemon here, again, at Lily Cove City, after you've beaten five gyms, the strongest team she could possibly have in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, she doesn't have a fully evolved starter Pokemon. It would still just be a Marsh Top, for example, here. Shroomish, Nummel, and Marsh Top. That is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't think of a fifth Pokemon to give her at least to make her a little stronger 
They couldn't at least make her level 36 to evolve her starter Pokemon. They couldn't make her Shroomish a Breloom. No. I have no idea what they were thinking with this being her final team and then not have you fight her again, ever again in the entire game. There's no post-game fight. There's no fight with her right before Victory Road or right before the Elite Four. This is it. This is the last time you ever see this character in Ruby and Sapphire. And that is bonkers to me. <laughs> but they had the opportunity to, you know, correct some wrongdoings in Emerald. And they kind of fixed it <laughs> a little bit. Um, at least Pelipper is fully evolved. It's not just a Wingle, so there's that. Although, instead of Swellow, they added Tropius, which is fine, I guess. Although it was a little weird that they gave her Tropius when they took Swellow off of Winona's team and gave her Tropius, so now you just fight Tropius a lot. Um, and Ludicolo is her grass Pokemon, even though it's not weak to fire. That's a little weird, especially when they also gave her Tropius. So it's at least slightly better, maybe, but I feel like it's still... It's still weird that she only has four Pokemon. It's still weird that her starter Pokemon still isn't fully evolved. That's still wild to me. <laughs> and if you were playing the Grovile team, it would take away her strongest Pokemon Ludicolo and replace it with the Grovile. <laughs> so it's, it's just a lot of weird choices, I think, that just come together to make her, I personally feel, one of if not the most disappointing, like, main rival in a Pokemon game. Spoilers, there are other rivals that aren't, like, you know, the main one that has, a, you know, the star of Pokemon that is strong against you that I think are more disappointing. But as far as the main rival who has the Pokemon that is strong into your, your starter, this is easily if not the most disappointing, one of the most disappointing rivals in the entire franchise. So I decided to do this. I give her Exploud, Grumpig, Brelu, Macarga, Whiskash, and then Armaldo. I think it would be a lot of fun to have it where your rival picks the fossil that you don't pick. And if you picked Armaldo, she would pick Cradilly. She's the one that gives you the go goggles to go into the desert. It could be a thing where she's like, oh, you know, here's a go goggles. We should go to the desert together. And then she, you know, go, goes off. And then you go to the desert, either you go up the tower or you find the fossil, you pick a fossil, and then she comes up and takes the other one. I just think that feels very in character for, you know, for her, especially since she did give you those goggles. Um, but outside of that, Exploud in um, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire in the the Battle Tree, I think, it was, yeah, <laughs> in the, in the or Battle Mason, whatever it is, in the Battle Facility that that is there. Uh, if you pick her as a partner to go through with, she has an Exploud, and I think something about that just seems to fit her well. Same with Grumpig. Um, it's a Pokemon that got no love throughout the entire game. Uh, you can you can catch one pretty early, so so by her third or fourth fight, she could very easily have one. I just think of this this team just I think comes together a lot better than her previous teams, and I like these uh, the the fire grass water type I picked here because all three of them are quad weak. To, to moves that your starter can have. Breloom is obviously weak to fire, but it's also quad weak to flying type moves, which players can, can learn. My cargo is quad weak to water and ground, and then Whiskash is obviously quad weak to grass. I just like that trio being quad weak to, to types that your starter can use. So I just think this team is a, is a very, very good improvement Especially, you know, if for no other reason than it being a team of six, which she didn't usually have.
So current rankings, um, May, you're dead last. So Silver, you can you can keep that spot for just a little bit longer. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but we're not quite done with with um with Gen 3 because we have Wally. Now, Wally, I really wish he were more of a character throughout your playthrough because you see him in Mallville. And then you don't see him again at all until Victory Road. I kind of wish there were one more fight with him, preferably somewhere around uh, Norman. So there's at least, you know, you've gone through two, uh, two you, you gained two gym badges since you last fought him. And I think him, his team being around like 29, where it's not quite a Gardevoir yet, but, you know, still is, you know, Curlia is still you know, relatively unique to that point in the game. And, you know, he can show that he's not, he's not weak, but he's not quite there yet. And, you, you know, you still push him a little more. I think somewhere around there will be a good spot to fight him a second time. But the way it is right now, you fight him once when you have a, a Ralts, and then again when he, ha he has this team. A team that I feel is just kind of thrown together. Obviously, I don't love Altaria being... Um, being Winona's ace, it's not as big of a deal, like I said before, because it does come after Winona, but there are still other hooks when he could have had that, you know, it, instead of Altaria, Del Caddy is very weak. Um, it, like, it, it maybe kind of fits his personality a little bit, but it, it's, and I like that it can use assist to, you know, to use stuff like Thunderbolt and Psychic and Dragon Dance and whatever else. So it can it can kind of be annoying it if it you know picks something random that is good into what you have against it. Um, Roselia, I I like here. Um, Magneton, I don't really know why he has one of those, especially since that's another ace of, a, of another gym leader in in, in red and or, sorry in ruby and sapphire. Um, it's also just used a lot on other teams. It's even used on Silver's rival team. Garvar, obviously great. I also don't know why they didn't give him a six Pokemon. So it's it's not a terrible team. I just don't really get it. I don't really know what they are going for with this composition. There's nothing really about his personality that that like screams to me. Oh yeah, he should have Altaria. Oh yeah, he should have Magneton. So what I did. I gave him a team of six Pokemon that all have either a 10% or lower encounter rate in the in the route that you catch them at. Delcaddy is obviously notoriously hard to get in the route right above Rustboro. Uh, Surskit, in every single route that Surskit can be found, there are, I believe, a 1% encounter for some ridiculous region, reason. Um, in... Sapphire and Emerald, which I'm assuming this will be an Emerald site. Duskull is found at a, I believe, five percent encounter at every place you can find them. Same with Snow Run; it's a ten percent encounter. Relicanth is obviously notoriously hard to find, and then Ralts. He was obviously very lucky to find that in the first place uh, on that route east of uh, Petalburg. So I just think since he, you know, is was super lucky to find a Ralts. I think it'll be fun for his 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 uh the next time you fight him in this presumed pedal brick fight for him to have Del Caddy mastering Curlia to showcase that he is still dedicated to finding these rare Pokemon. And then when you find him in Victory Road, he has other Pokemon that are just ridiculously hard to find that you know the trainer probably has either never seen or would never bother to catch in the first place because they are so hard to find. And again, uh, this is, this team is created assuming that my Elite Four teams uh, that I created would be canon with, instead of Phoebe and Glacia, it's a, it's a grass and electric team. So Dustclops and Glalie aren't going to be used anywhere else, so they're right for the picking here. I just I just love this idea of him taking of you know the 
the developers or me in this case, <laughs> taking the idea that Ralts is super rare and extrapolating that into an entire team. I like that a lot. Current rankings. Wally, I actually put above silver. Yes. Um, yes, Wally doesn't have a team of six, but I just hate silver's team so much that I put Wally above it. Um, it's uh, this is completely a vibes thing. I just really feel like Silver's team, while you while you fight him throughout the game, just feels very mundane and kind of lame <laughs> and very repetitive because the Pokemon you fight, you just fight a lot of those kinds of Pokemon, especially when you're in the thick of the rocket plot line and he throws out a gold bat and like, oh, I fought 20 gold bats and zoo bats already in this section of the game alone. So that's the kind of situation where uh, you know, looking at previous teams will help break the tie where necessary. Next, Leaf Green Fire Red. Um, this <laughs> Blue's final team from Leaf Green Fire Red is absolutely insane. You know, obviously his team in base Leaf Green Fire Red is near identical, if not exactly identical, to his red and blue team. But in the champion rematch, he has this team. A Heracross, Alakazam, Tyranitar, Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados. He came to play with this team. I adore the fact that they specifically chose two Pokemon that were basically absent completely from Gold and Silver and Heracross and Tyranitar, and then kept the rest of his iconic, very powerful team. I like this so much, and I even like the fact that in um, in Heart Gold, Soul, Silver, in his rematch team, they kept Tyranitar. So I, and I think Heracross fits him well. I just, all of it comes together to just being a very, very good team. Um, I still don't love Alakazam being here. I still don't necessarily love like as you know so much overlap with Alakazam Mark and Gyarados being on other major trainer teams but just as a unit especially since it is a post game champion rematch fight I'm going to kind of give those kinds of fights a little more leeway because you know uh, because they you know I feel like post game fights are kind of immune to a lot of the criticism that I, I have in general, I still would prefer Gengar or some, you know, other Pokemon instead of Alakazam, especially. But as a unit, it's a it's very hard to take down, especially. It's it's just a very intimidating, strong team, and it's also very unique to him as a unit. So I, I'm not even going to say really fix it. <laughs> it. It just goes at the top immediately. I like that team so much more than every other rival fight up to this point. And again, that might be a little bit of a, you know, cheating a little bit because it is this post game champion rematch fight, but it is the last time you fight him as a rival in Leaf Green Fire Red. So it goes at the top. Diamond Pearl Platinum. Barry. In theory, I like this team enough. I like the idea of him having two honey tree Pokemon and Heracross and Snorlax, with Munchlax being so hard to find under normal circumstances. Um, I'm not even really going to go into just how ridiculously patient Barry had to be in order to actually get a Snorlax on his team. Um, I don't necessarily mind the fire grass water core, I don't think every single rival has to have a fire grass water type, but you know, it, as far as strong fire grass water types, this is about as good as you can do in even in platinum. However, because these are the three they picked, because these are kind of the, the three best options. He has a lot of overlap with other major trainers. 
Heracross is on Aaron's team. Rose Raid is obviously Gardena's ace, and it's also on Cynthia's team. Rapidash is the only other fire type you could pick, so it is also on Flint's team. And then Floatzel is on Crash Awake's team. So it just kind of, by the end of the game, just kind of makes him feel a little less unique than I feel he deserves to be. So because of that, I again, I like his team as a unit. I just personally feel like it doesn't represent the region as much as it could because there is so much overlap, you know, with, within his team compared to other trainers throughout the region. So because of that, I decided to switch out the fire gas water type for his, I believe his cannon started to be infernate. Give him a magnet zone. I know that's not same with Tangress. I know these aren't available in the Down and Pearl Pokedex, but we're assuming the Platinum Dex is the Canon one. A Magnezone, because uh, I decided to not give any other major trainers in this region Magneton, so you know he can have one. And then Tangrowth, another another Pokemon that no other major trainer outside of rematches have. And I think it'd be kind of fun if when you find him in Pastoria City. You know, that's where you can find Tangela. Uh, so, you know, the first time you fight him, it's in a, it's in the area where he could have theoretically just got Tangela. I like this a lot. And I, I think it'd be kind of fun if he even gets Heracross and Munchlax a lot earlier. Uh, so, like, when you fight him in Hard Home City, he already has Heracross and Munchlax. So it'd be Terravia, Heracross, Munchlax, uh, Monferno. Alternatively, he could have Magmite or Magneton instead, but I just think this team composition represents a region better. Um, Tangrowth doesn't really like necessarily fit him, but I didn't really feel like Rosary did either. But it is something that I th- I think represents the region well. And these those two I added, you know, also showcase Pokemon that along with Snorlax either evolve from or or our previous Pokemon that evolved into Gen Four Pokemon. So I, I like this a lot. As far as his original team, I'm putting it right below blue from red and blue. It's a solid team as a unit, and I, but I think it has a lot of similar problems that blue from red and blue has, where it has overlap of all their major, major trainers. But I like blue's team overall a little bit better. Black and white. The first region to like really go crazy with having a lot of different rivals uh, Ruby and Sapphire kind of started the trend having Wally technically as a second rival, but this one really committed to the idea of having multiple rivals. <clears throat> We're going to start with Bianca. This team is fine. Um, something kind of weird about both Bianca and Sharon is they decided that throughout the entire main story of Black and White, Bianca and Sharon are capped at having only four Pokemon. With her having Stoutland, Simi Sage, Wisharna, Imbor. And then the monkey and the starter would change depending on you know depending on who you picked. And I like those four Pokemon. However, I really do wish she could have you know developed a fifth one as well. And then having a sixth one in a rematch, you know, post-game rematch, I think that would be fine. Um because the way it is right now, the post-game fight you have with her, they just tack on me and Shao and Chandelure, who are aces of at least four members. And I feel there are other Pokemon from the region that, A, kind of fit her better and also aren't represented anywhere else. So as much as like I, I like Statlin, Simi, Sage, Mishard, and Imbor for her, I just don't love the fact that the two they tacked on the end, A, weren't, I can't really see as her Pokemon because they are just tacked on. They weren't able to be developed as her Pokemon throughout, but also they are aces of people you just fought in the Elite Four. So because of all that, I decided to do this. I decided that Bianca should actually take on the Fire, Grass, Water core, and along with her semi, her uh, yep, semi and starter change changing, she would also have a rotating fire cast water Pokemon that isn't really seen anywhere else. So she can keep Musharna, especially since, or yeah, she can keep Musharna. She can keep Mianxiao, especially since 
I decided to to stamp down Conkleder as Marshall's ace. And I also gave her an Audi note. I just think it fits her vibe quite a bit, especially with the other Pokemon I added with Alola Mola, Keith Moore, and Lilligant. I think those three Pokemon are Pokemon that you know, aren't really seen anywhere else. They fit her vibe well. Heatmore, not as much, but there aren't a lot of fire types to really work with. <clears throat> but it is a fairly strong fire type that, you know, I think fits her at least as well as Chandler does. <clears throat> and she can keep Mishana. That is a significant story beat that she gets one. So I like that. Um, all you know can be found in any wrestling grass, so she can get it as early or late as as is necessary. And I do kind of like Mianshao with her, uh, especially now that I took it off of being Marshall's ace. So I think her most canon team would be this one with me and with me and Shell, Musharna, Simi Sage, Lolomola, Adino, and Bor. But I do like the other teams I created as well. So Bianca, I'm putting. Uh, above Wally, but right below Barry. Um, I like Heracross and, and Snorlax on Barry's team so much. I'm going to, he, that alone kind of carries him a little higher than most other people. So that's where, but it is, I think, actually kind of close between Bianca and Barry. Moving on to Charon, I've always seen his team to be kind of like with Silver. I've always found it a little boring to fight throughout the game because you fight a lot of Lyperd in, you know, in team plasma fights. He's in the elite four. It's just a very common Pokemon you see very often throughout the game. Kind of same with Unfezen, especially since uh, Skyla also has one. By the time you, you know, it also does, it does not help at all that you fight Sharon very often <laughs> in black and white i'm barely exaggerating when you say you fight charon or bianca and or in some cases in almost every single new route and city that you go along within there's just a lot of rival fights throughout this game so by the end of it um you know you've you fought at least a dozen live hearts <laughs> at least and then Unfe Unfezen just isn't a very interesting Pokemon. I like, you know, I get the idea of giving him the root one bird that seems to be customary with, with rivals. I get that. But Unfezen just was never a very interesting Pokemon. In fact, female Unfezen, which thankfully he doesn't have, is one of my least favorite Pokemon design-wise. <clears throat> so, yeah, those four being the main Pokemon he has, it just, it's not very... It's not, it just doesn't feel very unique. It doesn't feel very intimidating. I do like how that's kind of reminiscent of a standard playthrough team that any, you know, any given person would have. <clears throat> they would have their starter. They would have the monkey that their starter is strong into. And then, you know, two Pokemon that you could find very early on in Life Heart and Noon Pheasant. I know in pretty much every single Pokemon game, my first playthrough team has you know, has a first root bird, and I essentially, you know, have already crafted at least the vast majority of my team before the third gem. So having Lipart isn't isn't crazy. It just by the time you get to the end, you fought you fought a lot of them. I do like Gigalith a lot. Same with Bianca. I wish it could have developed throughout the throughout your journey fighting him. It would help kind of, you know, fighting a rock and roll, then a Baldur, then a Gigalith. It would kind of help with the mundanity of the rest of his team. And then Haxorus feels very tacked on. I don't really understand that choice, especially since there are other Pokemon in Gen 5 that aren't really represented. And then Haxorus is obviously on Drayden's team. So if Gigalith were there for more of the game... I would rank this higher, but because it's just tacked on at the end, it just his team just kind of comes off feeling a little bland. So I decided to fix it by keeping Gigalith, giving him Stoutland from Bianca's team. Because if you notice, I didn't give her uh, Stoutland. I said give it here to kind of reference the fact that he would 
become the normal gym leader with, uh, with, uh, I, I said in, in that video that I would give him Pitov and, uh, uh, Mencino or yeah, Mencino, but you know, if you wanted to tack on a, um, a little pup as well, that's fine. But just, you know, those two together just kind of showcase more why he would want to be a normal gym leader. And then instead of pack source, I gave him a Durant. Durant really does kind of feel like one of those Pokemon they would, that is right for the picking to kind of tack on at the end. It's only found in victory road. Um, it's a you know the single stage Pokemon that isn't used anywhere else on other major trainers, so I think it, especially if Bianca has a Heatmore team, it's kind of fun if he has Durant because they you know they have that rivalry. Um, and yeah, I think his canon team personally is superior. Yeah, I it's it's not that much better since Stoutland kind of has a similar issue as. Lipard, you just fight a lot of them throughout the game. But since I'm having him have Boldor for more of the game than you know than normally, considering he only ever has it at the very end, I think this is just an overall better team. But I'm putting Charon right above Wally and below Bianca. Um, this is another one of the situations where uh previous teams kind of break a tie i just really do not like just how many lipards you fight whereas musharna isn't fought nearly as much throughout the entire game all right lastly for gen 5 we have in i'm not going to go over every single in team i think that would have been um, this because he's unique in that every single time you fight him he has a different team which is i think genius because it showcases more of the region it showcases pokemon that you could have caught you know when you fought him just in the previous route because that's kind of what he does like in you know when you fight him in charstone cave he uses a pokemon exclusively found in charstone cave when you fight him in the boss city you fight he uses a pokemon exclusively found in the desert you just went through so i really like that i almost kind of wish you would fought him more throughout because I believe the last time you fight him is in Charge Stone Cave. So, yeah, I would have liked maybe one more fight. But as far as his final team, this is incredible. Um, obviously, Kling Kling is used nowhere else. Zorwark is basically his pseudo-ace. Archaeops and Karakasta, great. Um, and, you know, obviously having <laughs> having the box legend you don't have fantastic vanilux is the only one that i feel doesn't necessarily fit him all that well um it's not a it's not bad but it just kind of felt like oh there's you know we just need to attack on another really strong pokemon we don't we don't really know what else to do here so we'll just throw on vanilux Thankfully, it at least isn't an overlap with an ace of a previous gym leader. Um, and you don't, you know, you don't fight a lot of Vanalux. This will be the first time you see that Pokemon. So it is a good choice in that aspect. I just feel like it doesn't fit him all that well. Whereas the rest of his team, I think, does perfectly. So the only change I would do is instead of Vanalux, I would give him Darmanitan. Not only is this a, this is a Pokemon that I think um deserves more representation since it is on no other major teams i think it would be perfect considering in the little opening cutscene, there is a shot of him holding zorowa standing or sitting next to a darmanitan there is also a woo bat but i didn't want to give him a slow bat i just i, I like cling cling here too much to give him a slow bat <laughs> um so I think Darmanitan and Zorwark both refer, you know, referencing that opening cutscene just feels so right to me. And you could say, you could either say, oh, this is the, you know, this is the Darma the Darumaka he had in the Nabasa City fight, or he just didn't have Darumaka there and said have something else. But yeah, I I I think personally, In's team is the best constructed team so far um 
it may even be, I haven't like completely finalized my rankings throughout the entire franchise yet, but at least as of right now, I I feel like it is it is easily in the running for the number one best rival team in the entire franchise. So that's that's where we're sitting at right now. Black and white two. They introduced Hugh as a rival. And I really do not like his team as a rival team for most of the game. As a unit right here, it's pretty solid. I like Flygon, El- uh, Electros, Buffalon. That's a nice, you know, three Pokemon for him to have. However, it's kind of similar to Silver and Blue which is this is even worse because it's in the same generation. Um, The vast majority of the times you fight Hugh throughout the games, his team consists of Boon Pheasant, a monkey, and a starter Pokemon. Meaning that for most of the game, his team is just Charon's team minus a Lipard. Flygon and Electros are t- are tacked on in the post game. He only ever has Buffalon in the Victory Road fight. So, for most of the game, he just has three Pokemon that you've already seen before on a previous rival, <laughs> and I don't understand that. So, because of because of that, he has essentially no real personality to him. I like him as a character a lot. I think Buffalo and Electros Flygon fit him pretty well. However, because the majority of the of the times you fight him, he just has three Pokemon that are, you know, that together at some point can be on Charon's team, just makes him feel like kind of a nothing character, very forgettable, I feel. I like how a lot of the times you interact with him you fight with him but as far as being a challenging rival it's just not there's just really nothing to it and it's even weirder because they at least gave Charon and Bianca four Pokemon to fight for most of the game whereas him the only time you find him with four is right before the Elite Four and then he didn't have six until the post game so I think overall a very disappointing team definitely the weakest of the Gen 5 rivals so because of that, I did this. I kept his Electros, and I added an Aggron. I think that's a very solid Pokemon that can develop throughout the game. I also added Basculin. I'm kind of wishy-washy on whether or not Basculin can, if he if it would uh, be Red Stripe or Blue Stripe, depending on the on the version you have. I could go either way. I think Gliscor fits his aesthetic very well. I like him having Bouffalant. His hair gives Bouffalant vibes. And then Samurai. I feel like Samurai is his canon starter personally. And I just think this team together just feels like a much better better team for you know for a, a rival team to have. Um I like him having Electros that you know that can develop more throughout the game. You know, Tino, Electros. Uh, or electric and then electros same with agron um Gligar can be fight can be caught around the middle middle point in the game so i just think this is a much more interesting team to see develop throughout the game and just has a lot more personality and uniqueness to it so because of all that i'm putting sharon so i'm putting hugh at number eight, just above Wally, although it was, it was honestly pretty close between those two. Um, by the time I make my next my next video going over the rest of the regions, this might get shaped sh- shaked up just a little bit. But as of right now, I think Hugh is there. If for no other reason, then he has a full team of six, and I still have a vendetta against Silver, <laughs> so that's why he's still at number ten. X and Y is where Pokemon started going absolutely off the rails when it came to rival teams. 
this game alone made me almost quit making this video several times <laughs> because you have four different characters who are considered rival characters. Three of them, you only fight two times. <laughs> there's no post-game fight. There's just one towards the beginning of the game and then that bridge fight where you fight them in a gauntlet, which at that point you're healed before the third one, so it's not even really a gauntlet. <laughs> so it was very challenging for me to think of ways to fix their teams, especially since they gave me almost nothing to work with. But we'll get there. First, we got to talk about Serena. Her team... I... I don't know. I've just never... I never really got what they were going for with their team. Um, like, especially since she has Meowstic, who is the ace of Olympia. And she has a Meowstic for way, like way before you fight Olympia. So, so by extension, Olympia, because it is, they chose to be, to be her ace. Olympia feels very lame as the seventh gym leader, since you fought a lot of Meowstics already. Um, Fable and Altaria just seem kind of tacked on. I like, in theory, her having a rotating evolution. I don't love that she has a has uh, Vaporeon, Flareon, Jolteon instead of Flareon, Jol Flareon, Vaporeon, Leafeon because it switches based on the starter that you pick. But she has Jolteon instead of Leafeon, so it's, I, I don't I don't really get that. I, I I know why they did it because they were pandering hard to you know to gen one a lot in that game so that's why they did that but i still feel like leafy on just kind of fits the vibe they're going for better i love mega absol absolutely but as far as this team is concerned there's really only two pokemon that are from this region meowstic and her shara pokemon so because of that i just it doesn't really, I can almost never remember what her team actually is. I know I haven't played Gen 6 as much as other games, but her team just has no real personality, no synergy. It's not even really that difficult, really. It's not representative of the region at all. So because of all that, I just it just feels very forgettable. So here's what I did. I decided to, to, to give her a Slurpuff instead of Clefable. Slurpuff is used nowhere else. Um, I kind of understand why they did Clefable because they wanted to showcase previous gen Pokemon having the fairy typing, but I personally feel it's more important to showcase the fairy typing period and Slurpuff is nowhere else, so I think Slurpuff just fits, fits well here. I decided to keep the, the evolution because I, I do like her having a fire grass water core. And I decided it'd be fun for her to have a starter Pokemon like the one that you get from Professor Sycamore. It wouldn't correspond exactly with the starter Pokemon you pick from Sycamore. I think that might be a little awkward to, to do. But we do know that Kakui has, or sorry, Sycamore has at least two different sets of starter pokemon because obviously the the one that you fight in the in the in the lab and then the one that you pick and you can even argue that the one that you you fight you fight later when he has a full team of fully evolved stars even that might even be a different set so he has at least two sets of starter pokemon that serena could pick from it wouldn't like solve the problem of of most of her team being uh being not of this region, but it would now at least be half. So yeah, there's there's that at least. But just something about her fire grass water core being an evolution, a gen one starter, and a you know, and their starter, that just feels like 
that at least feels like it represents the region better than what they were doing with Altaria and Clefable. Um, one kind of issue I do see with this is there would kind of be the question as to why she would be using Mega Absol and not the Mega Starter. But you could just say that, oh, Sycamore, you know, you could say that Sycamore developed the Mega Stone for the Starter himself and he only made the one the one that he gave you, that's the only one that exists or something, or she just didn't get one. There's there's a lot of ways to explain that, but I, I think Mega Absol, you know, does fit her well here. So I I there would be many ways to get around that. So because of all the reasons why I didn't really love her team, but at least she has six Pokemon. So I'm putting her at nine. That one is probably the most volatile pick on here. I could very easily see that going lower. Definitely not higher, but I could easily see it going lower. But at least as a team of six. So it's, in my eyes at this point, higher than Wally. Next up, Shauna. No, I didn't make a mistake here. Her strongest team is a Delcaddy, a Gujra, and Delfox, or whatever starter you're strong against. Yeah. I, to an extent, I kind of understand why they had it where, you know, Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor had this team of three on the bridge fight because it is a gauntlet. I understand that. But then they didn't give any of them post-game rematches with at least more Pokemon. It had to be a team of six, just more than three. In fact, it is, like I said before, bizarre to me that you have this group of other po- of other trainers who are considered rivals that you only fight the two times. You fight Serena like six times <laughs> almost every single new city you go to you fight you fight your rival you fight uh serena but then you don't fight the other three again until almost the end of the game with this being the final team that you ever fight that you don't fight them again in a post game fight i think this team at that point in the game, does fit her well enough. But I just wish there were one other team. It's almost like they gave up. It's almost like they forgot about them. And that's weird to me. Here's what I did. I'm keeping Gudra and Delphox, and I'm giving her Furfro, Nidoqueen, Sylveon, and Driftblum. Sylveon, it would be uh, long enough after uh, the the um the the fairy gym where i think it'll be okay for her to have sylveon plus it'll parallel uh, serena having an evolution so she should also have an evolution i don't know something like Nido queen seems to fit her well furfro is a pokemon that wasn't really given much love outside of the gimmick of it existing really in the region as far as like trainer teams it wasn't really anywhere so I like this being on her team. And Driftblum, I don't know, just the vibes of Driftblum for some reason seem to fit her. However, after making this, I did realize that the all the rivals should probably have Mega Evolutions. So this is a team if they just decide to not give the other rivals Megas. But this is the team where if they did have Megas, I'd do Mega Bayonet, just another ghost type that, I don't know, I just feel like it fit her pretty well. The only other uh, the only other Mega that I felt kind of fit Shauna is Ampharos, kind of. But I already gave Mega Ampharos to, um, to Drasna. Maybe you could give an argument to her having like Mega Charizard X or Garchomp or something else and then put Ampharos here, but I could go either way on that. I just know Mega Bayonet should probably be on some trainer's team somewhere in the game. So it goes here. And I I think this team, it's not the strongest team ever, even though Gudra is here. Gudra is not the best pseudo-legendary 
but I think it represents her and represents the region quite well. But because she only has a team of three and she has a Dell caddy, she has at the very bottom. <laughs> Sorry, that's just how it is. Next up, Trevor. I don't know what they were going for with this team for two reasons. One, Raichu and Aerodactyl just seem kind of random. It's like they just picked two random fast Gen 1 Pokemon to throw on here, which doesn't really seem to fit Florges at all. I'm not really sure, but also it's especially weird for Trevor specifically to have this team because <laughs> Trevor's whole deal is that he his goal is to complete the Pokedex. But his most complete team only has, oh, basically shows that he's only seen up to seven Pokemon. <laughs> Assuming he he got it as a Pichu, Pich, Pichu, Pikachu, Raichu, Aerodactyl, uh, Flabebe, Floetta, yeah, Floetta, and then Florges. Seven Pokemon total. <laughs> Yeah, his his goal is to complete the Pokedex. You're not doing a great job with that, buddy. Sorry. Um, and plus, I feel Floor just being here kind of takes that away from anyone else major having it. Um, ideally, you know, especially if you are if you do give, uh, you know, in theory, if you were to give Shauna Sylveon the the fairy. Gym leader could have Florges or Florges could go somewhere else as well. Because in my head, when I'm thinking back on teams before making this video, when I thought back on on Serena's team, I could have sworn that she had Florges instead of Clefable. But no, Trevor has one. So, but I am very proud of the team that I made for him. So I was thinking, you know what. What kind of team would really emphasize his drive to want to complete the Pokedex? And I was like, oh, it would be kind of fun if, you know, the first time he fought him, maybe he had like, you know, a Pikachu and a Shelmet, and he would, maybe he could still have Florges. But at some point throughout the game, or I guess at uh, that point, Flabebe, at some point throughout the game, there's an NPC who mentioned that. You know, he, he traded his Carablast for, you know, actually, sorry, let me back, let me back up, sorry. <laughs> he has Pikachu, Carablast, Flabebe. And then there's an NPC at some point in the game that's like, oh, you know, he, he mentions, oh, like, I, I traded my Shelmet for a Carablast and they both evolved. Isn't that amazing? And that showcases two things to the, to the player. One, it actually... There's something in the games that actually tell the player that's how Shelmet and Carablast evolved, because otherwise you wouldn't know unless you looked it up. Um, but also, it'd be kind of fun if shortly after that, after that time, you know, after you you talk to that NPC, you fight Trevor again, and this time he has an Excelgore. But then I was like, it would be fun if his entire team consisted of trade evolution Pokemon. So he has Trevenon, Excelgore, Aromatis, Politoed, Machamp, and Mega Scizor. I like this team a lot. <laughs> I like how four of them uh, evolve with a special item or some kind of unique unique way of evolving. And then Trevenant is a trade evolution from this game. And then, you know, Machamp. I know I dog on Machamp a lot on this, you know, in this series of videos because it is everywhere. But I haven't given it to any rival before. I took it off of uh, off of a Karina's team. So I think Machamp can go here fine enough. And then Mega Scizor. Um, I floated around the idea of like doing my low tick or a Gengar or, uh, you know, Slow King instead of Polytope. But like, I think. I think this is just a very solid team of 
trade evolution Pokemon. And it worked very well that, you know, there's there were a couple of different Pokemon that can mega evolve to choose from. Like I said, I was kind of floating around Mega Gengar instead of Scizor, but aesthetically, I feel like Scizor fits in well, especially since I gave Wigstrom Agron. So I like this team a lot. But unfortunately, based on his original team, I got to put him at the bottom. I just don't understand how he has Aerodactyl. And A, it's not a mega Aerodactyl either. Um, okay. But Aerodactyl and Raichu just don't really seem to synergize well together. It doesn't really seem to fit any bigger theme. Only having three Pokemon, I don't like it. And lastly, Tierno, the weirdo that he is. He likes dancing. That's his thing. Um, as far as I know, like he doesn't have any grander like drive to become like there's no aspect of Pokemon that he wants to like he doesn't want to compete in dance competition. He just likes dancing. And there's no like contest type thing in this region, as far as I remember, that involves dancing or whatever. So his team consists of Pokemon that can learn dance moves. Talonflame, I think, knows Feather Dance and or Swords Dance. Roserade only knows Petal Dance, which is very funny. Um, and then Crawdon knows Swords, Swords Dance. So in theory, I if he had a full team of six and they all had at least one move with the word dance in it, it would actually be pretty fun. However... Uh, since it's only three Pokemon, I can't rank it super high. I just really wish they had continued this theme for an entire team. There is so much potential here to have a very interesting team. And I just really wish that we fought them one more time with a full team of all dancing Pokemon. That's what I did. <laughs> Maybe I'm just you know, a sucker for Mirror B, but he should have a Ludicolo. Um, it can learn Rain Dance, obviously, but it can also Swords Dance. It could get Teeter Dance by Breeding, which I think it would be fun if Tierno's drive is to eventually become a breeder. Like, obviously, dancing is a hobby, but I think it'd be fun if a lot of the Pokemon that he has no egg moves that you know that normally they wouldn't have the normal gameplay but uh he he's bred them to have these dance moves ludicolo can learn teeter dance from for an egg move i think in this generation crawdot can learn dragon dance i know it can later um but regardless they can learn swords dance kingdra can obviously set up the rain with rain dance and also dragon dance butterfree can use quiver dance Altaria can learn Feather Dance from uh, from an egg move. And this is also why I, why I really wanted to get Altaria off of Serena's team to put it here. Feather Dance and Dragon Dance. And I, I wanted to take Trevor's floor just and put it here because it can learn Petal Dance. And I just think, you know, I think that works here. At least to give him one Gen 6 Pokemon. Because, I don't know. Him having Talonflame just never sit right with me, especially since that is um, the Fire Leaf Four members uh, ace. But I think Floor just here worked perfectly fine. But same with uh, Shauna. He should probably also have a Mega Evolution. And I'm not exactly sold on the idea of which Pokemon should, should be taken out. Either Altaria or Karadon to maybe... I wanted to keep at least one Pokemon from his original team the same with Crawdont, especially since it can, you know, I, I made essentially like a pseudo what uh, rain team and Crawdont can take advantage of that. Um, so I said take out Altaria for Tyranitar. You know, Tyranitar can learn Dragon Dance from Egg Move. Uh, that would that would help differentiate the the kinds of dancing that that his team does because if you take out like Crawdont, you would basically have to give Ludicolo Swords Dance. Um and then there'll be two Dragon Dancers. So actually three Dragon Dancers. 
So I, I think this team works fine. Again, I could easily see Karana be switching out as well, especially since um, uh, Altaria with his Cloud9 ability wouldn't be affected by the Sandstorm. That could work well. But either way, I think this team here just feels like the kind of team that Tierno deserves with how much potential, with how quirky the idea of a dancing team is this just feels this just feels like something that he deserved to have but based on his original team i'm actually going to put him slightly higher than may because of the the quirkiness and the potential he had um if they would just fought him one more time, it would have been, I think, something kind of special. I like his Roserade having only only pedal dance. He at least have, has a full team of fully evolved Pokemon. He has one less Pokemon than May does, but I just don't like May's team at all to the point where I think Tierno edges it out just a little bit. But speaking of May, there was actually one more team of Mays that we can analyze here. Her final team from Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, this team is technically a little better. A little bit better. <laughs> um, Raichu feels very tacked on, but at least it's now a team of four, or it's a team of five. At least she has a team of fully evolved Pokemon when you fight her in Lily Cove. She doesn't have right to them, but she at least has, you know, a Blaziken or a Marsh or a Swamper or whatever, and a Breloom and a Mad Cargo. So it's at least a lot better than her, her uh, Ruby and Sapphire and even her Emerald team. It's obviously not perfect, but it's at least better. And I did forget that her, her final team does consist of a Mega. So pretend that that Blaziken is a Mega Blaziken. I just completely forgot to make that a mega but because Raichu feels very tacked on similar how it was just tacked on to Trevor's team um I decided to to basically kind of merge her team from Oros along with the team I created for Red for Ruby and Sapphire and give her Grumpink and Armaldo or Cradilly depending and then Blaze can obviously be the ace but you can keep Swellow I don't mind Swellow being here um like, I like Explode a little more, but I don't mind the Swallow necessarily. Especially since it does kind of showcase, you know, it, it being more reminiscent of a playthrough team a little more than even having Explode. So a much better team, much more, you know, a very big improvement from her Ruby and Sapphire team, but it's still not amazing. It's still only five Pokemon for some reason, despite it being a post-game fight. So because of all that, I'm putting it slightly below Serena. Um, if Raichu were any Gen 3 Pokemon, it would go above Serena, maybe even above Hugh. But because it's only five Pokemon, because Raichu is not from Gen 3, I'm putting Kyori number 10. But there's one more trainer <laughs> that we have to talk about. Oh my goodness, Wally... In Omega Ruby F is Sapphire, he came to play with his final team. I am in awe with just how cool this team is. They each just have something that make them ridiculous. First, Roserade, a uh, fully evolved Pokemon that was on his uh uh, that was on his original team with Roselli evolving into Roserade. That's fine. Uh, Talonflame with, with Gale Wings. Great. Azumarill, it's an assault vest that can fire off huge power, you know, Aqua Tails and uh, Play Ruffs. Magnezone being another fully evolved Pokemon from his original team with Magneton and Magnezone. Randomly having a Garchomp. Sure, why not? <laughs> why not? And then Gallade. Um, the only thing I could maybe see changing is switching out Talon Flame for like Dust Noir or maybe um Frostless if we're keeping a similar vibe to my changes from the 
uh, from Emerald, maybe a Zoomeril too, but then his team would be almost completely consistent of Gen 4 Pokemon. That may be a little awkward, but like I said, with the uh, with the blue champion fight from uh, from Leaf Green Fire Red, I'm going to be judging these kinds of fights a little differently. Um, you know, because you, he now has access to the to the expanded national decks, he doesn't have to have a team of just Gen three Pokemon. So I think, I think this is just a really really cool team that you know it keeps the fire grass water core. It has just a lot of very powerful, very unique fully evolved Pokemon. And it even does the Cynthia thing even better, where he has six Pokemon that have no overlap throughout their entire team. So he has 12 unique types. And that's that's really cool. Very few trainers have are able to do something like that. And I really appreciate that. <clears throat> so because of all that. I'm putting him in the top five. This could also go up a little bit. Um, maybe somewhere bet- like between the blues. Definitely not above blue from Leaf Green Fire Red, but it's a very easy top five at this point. Um, this is one of those situations where uh, previous teams will, will you know help break the tie because I still don't love his... Uh, Final team in uh, in Victory Road. You know, he still has Magneton. He still has Delcaddy. I like the addition of Galleys. I think he has Rose Raid at that point. But it still doesn't feel very representative of the region. But that final team is still so good that it's at least a little above Barry. So that's the current rankings from bottom top. We have Trevor, Shauna, May from Ruby and Sapphire, Tierno, Silver, Wally, May from Oras, Serena, Hugh, Sharon, Bianca, Barry, Wally from Oras, Blue from Red and Blue, Blue from Yellow, <laughs> Blue from Liquid Fire Red, and then In from Black and White. And if you want to see how I rank the rest of them, that'll be in the next video where I go over the rest of the rivals from Gen 7, 8, and 9. And again, even though that's only three generations, almost half of the rivals come from those three generations. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully you you, know, you liked this video. Uh, give any suggestions you, you want for how you would change these rival teams. If you think I ranked them incorrectly, if you, if you, you know, uh, maybe I just didn't didn't see the merit in a certain team, or uh, you know, or, or maybe you you know don't have the same issues I have with any of these teams. If any su- you know suggestions of how you would change them, just give me you know I just I'd love to have discussions about this kind of stuff in the comments below. Um, so I, I hope I you know see you in the next video to uh, conclude this analysis of these rival teams. So with that, we will see you all next time.